could you imagine if you had to imagine an astronaut? Would it be a fighter pilot, scientist, or would it be a sportsman? That's no coincidence. Actually, for decades, people just out of these three disciplines mainly have been selected to go to space. And even if you would have asked just a few years ago space professionals whom they would like to send to a simulated space mission, they would have most likely named you a name of a person out of these three disciplines. But would you believe me if I would tell you that I, an active wheelchair user, has spent two weeks in a simulated moon habitat? My name is Thomas Dukai, and I am the world's first wheelchair-using analog para-astronaut, and I am here to tell you and, and share an idea that space is for everyone and that future starts now. <laughs> Imagine a training for astronauts. You probably would imagine an astronaut spinning in a centrifuge or diving in a scuba diving pool. But now, let's fly to Mars. Let's imagine a Martian base where you can't go outside. Communication with Earth is delayed. There is no technician nor a hospital nearby in case there is any technical problem or medical emergency. That's not science fiction. That's actually a reality how astronauts train directly here on Earth. These scenarios are called analog missions. And these are scientific scenarios where astronauts mimic life in space on the ISS, on Moon, or the Mars. Together, they are in isolation for days, weeks, or even months, performing together scientific experiments or testing uh, procedures or just experiencing the effect of isolation and confinement on their social interactions. Even big space agencies like ESA or NASA use such facilities in order to prepare their astronauts for the unknown, the life in space. But there is one topic which is often put under the table, which is as important as the others, namely health of individuals in space. Because there are several medical issues that uh, astronauts encounter in space, whether it is bone loss um, or muscle atrophy or vision impairments. And actually, these are not rare cases. These are quite common effects. And uh, therefore, I think it's quite natural to ask oneself if something happens, something like this happens regularly, why don't we train for these common circumstances? Why don't we include people in crews with, who suffer from exactly these medical symptoms or other disabilities, maybe even their whole life. And that's exactly the questions two architects in Poland dared to answer, creating a analog, an analog space habitat just from scratch called the Lunaris Research Station, which they made accessible for people with disabilities. They asked themselves, what 
will happen if we include people with different abilities in our crews, how this will affect operations, procedures, or group cohesion. So out of that, space exploration has a new term, analog for astronaut. And that's exactly the moment where I step into the story as one year ago, I became a, an, an analog per astronaut myself, having participated in a two-week simulated mission. Together with my crew, we performed scientific experiments, we cooked together, we even performed extravehicular activities together. And we noticed one thing, that inclusion wasn't a burden, it didn't limit us. Actually, it made us stronger. Space missions have been designed just for a small fraction of people for now. But um, if we open the door for individuals with different abilities, with different mi minds and different talents, we do not just uh, make um, crews bigger, we make space exploration more inclusive. Because in, in space, the, something will happen. And you have to be prepared for every situation. It's useless to just get for the ideal. You have to train for the real. And space is nothing if not real. I didn't go to space, but for two weeks, I acted somehow like I would. And in fact, with that, I proved a major truth, that inclusion isn't just capacity and charity, it's necessity. And in in fact, the universe doesn't care how your body looks like. It's just important that your mind and spirit persists and that your team can trust you. So now I'm asking you, what is the future we build if we include everyone? I think that's the exactly one we have to aim for. Thank you very much.